continued, said, we don't care what God says. Then he said he was going to send somebody that would take them away, right? So Jeremiah, he, so the prophets told the children of Israel what God would do. Some of the things he said he would do were not nice because the children of Israel had sinned and they were disobedient. And God has to punish his children. Just like every godly parent punishes their children when they don't do what's right. But, sometimes God would tell them some things that were good that was going to happen. Right? And God had made a promise to the children of Israel that, that, he, would, that he would set... Um, some, one of the sons of David on the throne of Israel in the city of Jerusalem. And in fact, that was always, it would be that way forever. And so some of the things that God said, the prophets told the people of Israel, Silas, have not happened yet, have they? But does that mean that they won't happen? No, they will happen. Because God gave them even to us in his word. Now, Jeremiah, who we learned about last week, he preached to the children of Israel. He said, you have to turn to God. The children of Israel said, we don't feel like turning to God. They said, we want to keep worshiping idols. And, um, and so then God, J Jeremiah told them that God was going to send a king and his army. And Nebuchadnezzar came and captured most all the people of Israel from Jerusalem and carried them away to another land a long, long, long way. Put them in chains, and they had to walk in chains all the way for a thousand miles at least, a long way away to another land. And there in that land, a whole bunch of people who were the children of Israel, and they started living there. And you know what? God sent a man to tell those people what he wanted. And what they should do. And so that man is a prophet, right? Jeremiah stayed back and he continued to preach what God wanted to the people that were still in Jerusalem. And God sent Ezekiel. God sent Ezekiel to the children of Israel that were in Babylon, a thousand miles away from Jerusalem. Long, long, long way. Um, but God still sent somebody to them to tell them what he wanted, right? Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what God told Ezekiel. Ezekiel is one of the books of the Bible. It's a big book of the Bible, and there's a lot of stuff in it. So I can't tell you everything. Now, the Bible tells us that God, in the past, he spoke to, the people of, to his people in different ways. And one of the ways that God spoke to Ezekiel a bunch of times is with a vision. Now this is going to be, just I don't know if I can exactly explain it, but it was kind of like a dream, but it was a special vision. Ezekiel would be sitting there, and God would give him a vision. And it would be like he wouldn't be able to see what was around him, and in his mind or in something like a dream, he could see something but he would remember it afterward. And even what he saw, he could hear the voice of God while it was doing. He knew it was from God. It was a vision from God. And Ezekiel, after he got done having these visions from God, he wrote them down for us, and that's what we have in the book of Ezekiel. One time, Ezekiel was on the side of the river, and he was thinking or something, and God came to him and showed him a vision. God came and showed him Something that was very glorious, super, super bright. In his vision, of course, it didn't hurt his eyes because he, was, he wasn't really seeing it with his eyes. But it was so bright. It was the glory of God. Some of you might remember way back when we were, uh, when the children of Israel had left the land of Egypt. God had them in the wilderness and he had them build a tabernacle, right? And in the middle of the tabernacle was a holy place and a holy of holies. And once they had completely built the tabernacle, it was already in the middle of all the children of Israel, God sent his bright, shining glory to sit in the tabernacle. You might remember that. Do you remember that, Thomas? You were shaking your head like you do. And then, a little bit not as far back in our lessons, we learned about Solomon. Solomon built the most beautiful temple, right? The temple for the Lord, and the temple had 
uh, holy place, and the most holy place, and in the most holy place was the Ark of the Covenant. And sitting over, the, and when the temple was finished, God's glory came down and filled the whole temple. And when it filled the whole temple, all the priests that were there, even though they were sanctified and set apart to worship God, they had to leave the temple because God's glory was so bright and it filled the whole temple. Well, most of the time, God's glory sat over top the holy place, the holy of holies. And it was a symbol of God's power, His protection, His judgment, His glory, everything that's wonderful about God was symbolized in that bright glory that was there in the temple. So, in Ezekiel's vision, he saw the glory of God, and it was over the temple. It was in the Holy of Holies. And then, the glory of God, it rose up, and it went outside of the Holy of Holies. And then, it left the temple. And then it left Jerusalem. And then it left the land of Israel. And what was that showing Ezekiel? That God's glory and presence was leaving the children of Israel. Now why do you think God was telling Ezekiel that he was leaving the children of Israel? Let me tell you. Before Ezekiel saw that, God showed him what was inside his own temple. He looked in there in the vision, and in the temple of God, there was idols to other gods. That's awful, isn't it? It's God's own. There shouldn't be idols anywhere. But they had idols. The children of Israel, God's people, had idols in God's temple. And then God showed them in the vision the walls of the temple. And you know what was on the walls of the temple? There were pictures they had painted with colors, and I don't know how, but they had painted pictures of idols. Yeah. Pictures of grotesque idols on the walls of the temple. And people were worshiping the pictures. People were worshiping the idol, and people were worshiping the pictures, and in God's vision, in Ezekiel's vision, he looked the other way, and there was a whole bunch of men and they had their backs to the temple of God. Now, if you wanted it to the presence of to you, and so what was that? They were turning their back on God, and you know who they were, what they were worshiping? Not an idol. They were worshiping the sun. Yeah, people worship the sun. There's still people today that worship the sun. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, the sun is pretty consistent. It's always there, but it's just the sun. God created the sun, right? So... But, but the people, some of God's people had turned their back on God and they were worshiping the sun. And that's why God showed Ezekiel that his glory was leaving. But you know what was really sad? Ezekiel saw that many of the children of Israel, they didn't even care that God had left. They didn't even care. It didn't bother them at all that God had left. Why would it not bother them at all that God had left? Why would they worship idols that instead of worshiping God? Why would, what do you think, Genesis? They weren't obeying God. What is it when we don't obey God? It's sin. That's right. And so they sinned, and they didn't turn away from their sin and back to God. They stayed in their sin. Were you going to say something else, Aurora? What do you think? And they don't worship him. That's right. So, they were sinners. And they liked their sin more than they cared about God. Now, that's hard to believe, but when we say it that way, but you know, lots of people like their sin more than they want to please God. Right? In fact, the Bible says there's way more people that like sin they're on a big, wide road going to destruction. And the road that follows God, that's going to God, is very narrow. And there's not many people on it. You know, 
One of the reasons, and Ezekiel tells us a little bit about this man, this person, one of the reasons that there's so much sin in the world is because of, does anybody know who it's because of? The devil. The devil. That's right. What's another name for the devil? Satan. Satan. That's right. In another vision, God showed Ezekiel a little bit about Satan. And so we know some more about where Satan came from. Was Satan always evil? He was not always evil. He was created by God. And God showed Ezekiel in his vision how Satan was uh, almost like he was a one of the, um, the guards of God's throne. He, I, I, I don't know. I imagine he was standing there. It was his job to guard the entrance to God's throne. And one day, Satan must have thought, I don't want to just guard God's throne. I want to sit on God's throne. Right? Now that, Satan was just, he was Lucifer. He was a powerful angel. He wasn't God, but it's like, I want to sit on that, on that throne. I want people to worship me instead of God. He was filled with pride. But do you think he was success successful? He might have. He probably even talked to some of the other angels and said, What do you think? Let's take over. I'll be your leader. Did they win? No. Ezekiel tells us that God threw Satan out of heaven. He kicked him out. And Satan and all the angels that followed him are no longer good beings. They're evil beings. And, you think they decided, well, we shouldn't have done that, and we'll do good things from now on. No, they didn't. Satan hates God still to this day, thousands of years later. And his followers, his demons, they hate God still to this day. And so what do they try to do? They try to get people to sin, don't they? Now, some people sin because their own sinful flesh, they do what that, what what, they, what their flesh wants to do. Sometimes we sin because Satan tempts us. Sometimes we're tempted by ourselves. Sometimes we're tempted by Satan. Sometimes we're just drawn away by the world. But Satan is involved in, in these things. Satan is the enemy of God. But he is a defeated enemy. God, God lets him do certain things right now, but God kicked him out of heaven and someday... Satan will not even be able to be around us on the earth at all, or anyone that's on the earth. But right now, he convinces people to fight against God, to disobey God. And that's why we have so much sin. That's part of why the children of Israel sin. Now, God had promised the children of Israel that he would be their special people. But he also promised them that if they didn't obey him, he would have to punish them, right? So what do you think? Do you think that God has any... Do you think he cares at all about the children of Israel now? They've sinned against him. Well, the Bible says that God's promise to Israel is forever. So even though the, the individual people of Israel have sinned against him, and they won't go to heaven unless they turn to Jesus and believe on him, God still has plans for Israel. And one day, God gave Ezekiel a vision that explained this. Now this is, you've got to have an imagination. How many brought your imagination today? Did you bring your imagination today? You did it? Okay, so do a quick call back home. Home, send me my imagination because I need to use it right now in, in the lesson. So, in this vision that God gave Ezekiel, he took him to another spot, and Ezekiel could look out of a large valley, across a large valley. Now, a valley has, like, mountains on the sides, right? And in, the, in between the mountains was this big, huge valley, and it was filled with men's bones. It was filled with men's bones, almost like there had been a tremendous battle there, and the losers' bodies were left, and they were all dry. And they were separated from one another. The bones were separated from one another. They were dry. There was no flesh on them at all. It was like an open graveyard 
and no and nothing connected at all. And in in this vision, God said to Ezekiel, "You see this valley full of bones?" And God said to Ezekiel, "Can these bones live?" Now, how would you answer that question? No. No. But you know how Ezekiel answered that question? Yeah. He said, "Oh Lord." You know whether they can live or not. Because God could do anything, couldn't he? And in the vision, God said to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, preach to the bones. Now, if God told you to preach, if someone came and told you to preach to bones, that's kind of like, they're dead. There's no, they don't have flesh, they don't have anything. They can't hear, they don't even have ears to hear, do they? But do you think Ezekiel obeyed God? God said, preach to the bones. Ezekiel got up and he preached to the bones. And you know what? In this vision, Ezekiel preached to the bones and this is what began to happen. One bone started moving all by itself. Got your imagination going? A bone like moved and it connected to another bone in just the right spot. And then another bone came together until... The bones were connected to one another just the way they were before the, the, the men had died. And then the Bible says in the vision, flesh came onto those bones, and skin came onto the bones, and there was all people, but there was no breath inside them. So all the bones were together in the imagination, and this is not, this, Ezekiel saw this, and God was showing him something, and I'm going to explain really quick. But there was flesh inside, they had flesh and skin. But they could not breathe because there was no breath in them. So they were like a dead person with all their flesh. And then God said to Ezekiel, preach to the wind. And he preached to the wind. And the wind came through and pretty soon God in the vision gave his breath. Gave breath and life to every one of those bodies that was in the valley. And then God said, Ezekiel, you know why I showed you that vision? He said, this is why I showed you that vision. Right now, my people, the children of Israel, they are scattered all over the earth. He was in Babylon. Other ones were in Nineveh. Other ones were down in Egypt. Some were back in Jerusalem. They're scattered all over the earth. But someday, I'm going to bring them together back to Jerusalem. But in the vision, even when they were brought to, back together, they didn't have any life, did they? And so what we know is that Someday after that, God is going to give his people his word in their heart. Remember last week we, we talked about that? That God would give, not just give them their city and their land back, but he would give them a heart, and in their heart, his law would be in there, and God would, and the people of Israel would know God's law in their heart. So, that was... We got one more vision, and I know you have distraction. I, you guys are doing really good at listening. Okay, so this is just one more, one more vision that Ezekiel saw. After that, Ezekiel saw this vision. He was there, and in his mind, God showed him something, and God's voice was there with the vision. And in that vision, he saw all the children of Israel back in Jerusalem. And then he saw that in Jerusalem was another temple that was built. Now when Ezekiel left, the temple had been burned to the ground. It had been destroyed. But God showed Ezekiel a new temple. And in this new temple, it was different than the temple that they had. And he wrote lots of detail about the difference, the temple there. And when Ezekiel saw the temple there, he saw and looked, and there was the glory of the Lord. Remember in the beginning of his visions, the glory of the Lord had left. And now in this last vision, the glory of the Lord came back to the temple that is still going to be built. It's not built right now. There's no temple in Jerusalem. But someday there will be a temple, and for a thousand years, somebody is going to sit on the throne in Jerusalem. Who is that going to be? What's his name? What's his son's name? Jesus. Jesus Christ. That's right. 
Jesus is the Son of God. He's the King of Israel. He's the ruler of the whole world. And someday, he's going to sit on the throne in Jerusalem, and people will worship him at this temple. And so Ezekiel was telling us in that part about a king, about an anointed one, right? Do you remember what the word is for anointed one? Remember what the word in the Old Testament is for the anointed one? We've learned it. It is Messiah. And the same word in the New Testament is Christ. That's, how, that's why we know that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. That's one of the ways we know that. And Ezekiel is telling us some things about Jesus Christ. Now, during our lesson, I talked about sin, didn't I? And how there's so many people who don't want to do what God wants because the devil tempts them and they have sinned themselves. And that the road to destruction is filled with lots and lots of people. And the road to heaven and God's glory doesn't have a lot of people on it. Jesus said that it was narrow and hard to get onto to go to heaven. But it was wide and lots of people went toward hell. But let me tell you this. Every single person in all the world has a choice. They have their own choice to make about which road they will be on. Now, when you're young, you don't completely understand this. But we still need to tell you because someday you will understand it. When the Holy Spirit convicts you and you say, I know I'm a sinner, yes. I do things wrong. I do them wrong because I want to do them wrong. But... I understand that God is not pleased with that. And I want to turn from my sin and I want to please God. You will find that there's no way you can please God. But if you turn from your sin and you believe on Jesus, the anointed one, Jesus died on the cross, didn't he? Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin. And if we believe, we turn from our sin, we believe on him, we believe that he is our Lord and he is our Savior. He saves us, and he allows us to be walking on that road that ends up in heaven. But it's not an easy decision, because you've got to turn from your own way. You have to say, I don't want that. In our minds, you have to say, I don't want that. I'm going to, I'm going to leave that. I'm believing in Jesus. And when the time comes that, that God speaks to you, and you're like, you, I need to be saved. I'm a sinner, and I need to turn from my sin, and I need to believe on Jesus. I want you to know that if you want to talk to somebody, you can talk to me about that. I could, we could look at more verses in the Bible, and you could understand that better and believe on Jesus. You could talk to Mrs. Boglin about that. You could talk to any of the, uh, the college students that are here with us. You might not know their college students, but Miss Megan and Miss Katie and Miss Katrina and Miss Narissa and Mr. Ike and even Miss Brenna could help you understand what the Bible says about that. When you understand, and you want to turn from your sin and believe on Jesus, we want to help you understand that, and we want to help you believe on Jesus yourself. So, the prophets tell us what God wants us to know. Some of the things have happened. Israel is scattered all over the world, and some of the things have not happened. Israel is going to be brought all back, and they are going to turn to God, and they're going to believe on Jesus, who they killed, and he will be their king and ruler over even not just them, but the whole world someday.